For this sample, we are going to be completing the knife pleat. For the knife pleat, you need two pattern pieces, 21A.1 and 21A.2. The reason you have two pattern pieces to complete this sample is because we are going to be taping them together to create one long pattern. On your pattern piece, you will see that it has tape here and tape here. To do this, you will literally match up these two spots and put a piece of tape here to create one long pattern piece. You will place this pattern piece on your material and cut it out. Once it is cut out, you need to transfer the information from the pattern piece onto the material. The information that is important to us are both solid lines, dotted lines, and the arrows. To transfer this information onto your material, you are going to need a tracing wheel, and tracing paper. When you choose tracing paper, you want to pick something that is going to show up on your material. My material is pink, so I pink picked white tracing paper so that it will show up once I transfer the markings from the pattern piece to the fabric. To transfer the markings, I'm going to lift up my pattern put the tracing wheel the tracing paper face down reline up my pattern piece and then i am going to be using the tracing wheel to transfer these lines you need to press decently hard so that these lines will transfer in order for me to indicate the difference between a solid line and a dotted line i am going to trace the whole solid line and only half of the dotted line. The whole solid line and only half of the dotted line. Continue this process until all the markings are transferred onto your material. The spot where you taped is a whole line, so it's a straight line. Dotted line is half. Straight line is whole, or solid line is whole, dotted line is half. If you look closely, you can see that my markings were transferred onto my material, which is going to help me form my pleats. The last thing I need to do is transfer on my arrows to indicate which way I'll be folding the material. I will be using an error soluble marker, which will show up on my material, but over time will disappear. If I look at my markings, my arrows go this way, this way, move it down together so you can see this way and this way. So now I can see which way I'm going to be pulling my lines. You will see a pattern that you will have long lines getting pulled into short line, long line getting pulled into short line. From here we are ready to construct our pleat. Knife pleats can be constructed in having all the pleats lay in the same direction. So I'm going to fold on my long line, follow my arrow to my short line, secure my pleat with a pin, continue this process, long line, fold on the long line, follow my arrow, secure the pleat with a pin. You can see that all my pleats are going in the same direction. 
fold along the line, bring that all the way over to my short line. Secure with the pin. And last one, fold on the long line, bring over to the short line, and secure with a pin. So all my pleats are going in the same direction. This is now ready to bring to our machine so that we can secure each pleat with a basting stitch. We are now going to be working on completing your knife pleat. As you can see, all the pleats are going in the same direction. We are going to baste along the top and then baste down the legs where the fold is of each pleat. A basting stitch is at a stitch of four, so make sure you adjust your machine before you start. Basting stitches are meant to be taken out, so we will not be back stitching. When you line up your material, we're only going to be doing a one-fourth seam allowance because we want this seam to be caught into the next seam when we are actually creating a garment. As you sew, make sure to pull out your pins as you get to them. I am holding my pleats down with my left hand and steering with my right. You are not back stitching because this is a basting stitch. Finish the first part. You will see a basting stitch all the way across the top of my knife pleats. My next step will be to sew down only on the fold with a basting stitch to hold these knife pleats into place. When I come to the machine, I am only going to do an edge stitch, which is an eighth of an inch from the fold. We are not back stitching because this is a basting stitch. And you're going to come down maybe about an inch. This does not have to be a perfect measurement. And you want to clip your threads as you sew. If you do not clip along the way, your threads will get tangled and it will make it much harder to complete this sample. Go to the next fold, line it up so you do about an eighth of an inch. Trim your threads. Continue in this manner until you finish the last two pleats. When your sample is complete, you will have a basting stitch along the top and basting down each of the legs at the fold. Your knife pleats are now complete.